pick on Anna. Anna, can you give me a something that's going on over here? Okay, so you could say a vertical compression. Um, Victoria, what else do you see? It's going up three. Julian, what else do you see? Okay, so negative x is over 2. Okay, so. Yep, so we have a reflection. So when we multiply it on the outside of the function, it was reflected about the x axis. So if you're multiplying by negative on the inside, what do you think you'd reflect? No, out over here, we reflected the x axis. So you're going to reflect the y axis. Reflect the y axis. Is everybody seeing that? Yes? No? Preston, what would you give to be the y-intercept in this problem? Um, zero comma negative four, or one over four. Huh? What? Zero comma one-fourth, you said? OK. Yes, so you could say that the y-intercept is zero comma one-fourth. Right? So if originally, if here's one, and like 1 fourth would be like right there, right? And like right here. Um, so originally, if the graph, I'm just going to graph kind of something like this. I just want to show you guys the reflection. Without the shifting or anything like that. Actually, let's, let's do one down here. OK, without any shifting, if there's one, that's where the graph would cross. Does everybody kind of see that? Now. What's happening again? Well, one, it's being reflected about the y-axis, and it's being shifted up three. So this coordinate point, this coordinate point is now being shifted here, and it's being reflected about the y-axis. Now, there's something else I want to show you guys, because here's something that happened that didn't happen in the last problem. What else got shifted? Here's like the main big bonus question. Does anybody else know what else got shifted here? Let's pick on Kimberly. Can you figure out what else got shifted? The asymptote. Over here, nothing got shifted for the asymptote, right? Because guess what? What did we do with the graph? We just shifted the graph left to right. Asymptote doesn't change when it's horizontal. However, here, my asymptote was right there, right? Oh, that was so cool. So if my asymptote is right there, well, if now, if I shift the graph up 1, 2, wait, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. Oh, it should be up one more, right? 1, 2. Yeah, I didn't move it up three units. Sorry about that. Not to confuse you. Sorry, it should be up one more unit, right? One, two, three. Correct? Three units up. Well, again, this asymptote is a part of the graph. So what else gets shifted up? The asymptote. One, two, three. Because what is the asymptote? How does the graph relate to its asymptote? It approaches the asymptote, right? So if your asymptote is still down there, it's not, it doesn't approach the line 0. It approaches when no transformation opposes the line 0. So when you shift it up, you've got to shift the asymptote. And that's very, very important because, as we know, the graph does not cross the asymptote, right? It only approaches this asymptote. So when we're looking at identifying the domain and range, for instance, what is the domain? The domain is this one simple, negative infinity to infinity. However, the range, how low does this graph go? How low does this graph go? Three. three. And is three a part of the graph? Is three a point on this graph? Yeah. It's an asymptote. Does the graph touch the asymptote? No, so in this case, it is a parenthesis, not a point. OK, so it's going to be 3 comma infinity. The difference is over here. What if I did this? 1, 2, 3. And you guys did a quadratic, right? What's the range of this? The range of this problem is 3 comma infinity. Why is this one closed? Because is 3 a coordinate point on this graph? 
Yes, but here it's not a, it's not a point. It's approaching 3. Does everybody see that? It's really, really important for you guys to understand that. All right, last thing we're going to do, and then I'm just going to give you guys one.